Ladies and gentlemen, the shirt is back on for the final time, 2022. This is my most anticipated TV shows for 2023. Few quick disclaimers. First of all, I'm not 100% sure of every single show that's coming out next year. These are just the ones that I know for definite. So if I've missed anything, please let me know down below. If you want to share your list down below, that'd be sick as well. And lastly, I have done my favourite movies of 2022, favourite shows of 2022, and my most anticipated movies for next year. They're all on the channel. Channel, feel free to check them out. They're in the uh, best, worst, tier list, uh, playlist. I'll leave it in the description. But coming into number 10 is Skeleton Crew. I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about this at all. And that kind of makes me like really looking forward to it. I was gonna put Echo or Ironheart on there as well in 10th place but I just thought like something about Skeleton Crew that I'm looking forward to even though I don't know anything about it it's got really good potential hopefully it lands and yeah I just gotta be honest like I know more about Echo and Ironheart it makes sense to put them in number 10 but I'd be lying I really am looking forward to Skeleton Crew I just hope it's good man we need more good Star Wars shows coming in number 9 Agatha Coven of Chaos Agatha the villain of Division. I thought she was amazing mate she didn't get so much screen time she's pretty much only in like the last three episodes kind of like two and a little bit if we're being honest but she was stand out man she was really really good you guys know about the villa life baby i thought she just smashed it mate i definitely 100 down with her own tv show hopefully it's good at least on the same level as one division i'm not sure like how they're gonna do it but it interests me a lot and i like the whole mystic side of stuff obviously i'm obsessed with doctor strange so seeing another witch in the mcu get her own spin-off thing i'm down for it coming number eight the Witcher season three. On any other like normal day, this would be way higher, if I'm being totally honest. But the fact that I know that this is the final season with Henry and he's not going to be coming back, that is it, he's done. For those who don't know, they're replacing him with Liam Hemsworth, which I think is just. I don't want to talk about it. It's pretty bad. No disrespect to Liam. He might be amazing, but I, I can't see it. But on Boxing Day, ladies and gentlemen, the 26th of December, I reviewed The Witcher Blood Origin, and I ranked that genuinely the worst show of 2022. I gave it 1.5 nerds out of 10. The lowest I've ever given any show in nearly four years of this channel. It's, yeah, it's something. But it's left a bad taste in my mouth for The Witcher. So, hey, I'm still really looking forward to season three. Hopefully it's good. Before we head to number seven, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Private Internet Access. PIA hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection. By changing your geolocation, you now actually have the full selection of content on apps like Netflix, which is genuinely amazing because your boy is in London in the UK and there's a lot of shows and movies that are only available in Canada and the US. My location is now there, so now I can have everything they have without actually physically flying to America. And you can protect up to 10 devices with a massive range of platforms, including the PS5 and Xbox, which if you are gaming, which you know I do on the regular, there is another huge benefit. You can bypass ISP throttling, which then leads to lower ping times, increasing your download and upload speeds. And just like before, now you can access geo-restricted games. And not to mention the whole changing your IP address, now you can overcome IP bans, which is amazing. PIA are genuinely flexing right now, and not to mention they are offering a 30-day money-back guarantee with 24-7 customer support. And by using the link in the description, ladies and gentlemen, and pinned in the comment section right at the top, you can get 82% off and four months free. It's too good. If you guys want to check out how awesome this is, all the links are in the description and the comment section pinned at the top. And lastly, once again, thank you so much to PIA for sponsoring this video. You guys are genuinely amazing. And now, back to the video. Coming in number seven, The Last of Us. I was like that, if I'd be honest, say like, you know, we don't need a show, it's gonna be bad, blah, blah, blah. And then slowly, they've given us some like little bits of information we know like HBO running it if I'm being honest I think that is probably the best like company to do this and it's from the writers who brought us Chernobyl which I gave 10 out of 10 I think it's actually if I'm being honest one of the best TV shows I've ever seen and the cast look really good man if I'm being honest and then we've got those trailers that just slapped mate it slapped differently this I'm really looking forward to this I don't know how much they're gonna focus on the first game or if they're gonna take like detours and that but I am 100% down for the ride you can bet your ass baby 
I am reacting to every episode on the channel with you guys. It's going to be sick. Coming in number six, Ahsoka. We ain't got a trailer. We ain't got anything. I'm certain it's coming out next year though. And I'm down for it. I'm so down. Her like small little roles in Mando season two. And then obviously Boba Fett. They have genuinely like just united the Star Wars community. Everyone likes Ahsoka from the Clone Wars. Not the start of Clone Wars. She was really annoying. But to the end and then Rebels and now Mando. She is like the one consistently sick thing in Star Wars. Cannot wait for our own show. It's gonna be so, so good, and I'm so down. Coming in number five, Secret Invasion. That trailer blew my marbles, mate, and it was like, I don't know, months ago now, so you've got that D23 thing. Nick Fury, scrolls, gun undercover. It's gonna be like spy thriller. If it's anything like Cap 2, The Winter Soldier, that like spy level kind of thing, this is gonna be so sick. This has got potential to be the greatest MCU show on Disney+. Plus. I think Loki is really, really high up, but I think this has got potential to be just as Good. And speaking of Loki, coming number four is Loki season two. Seen it three times now. I gave it a nine out of ten overall. I just think it's great, mate. Absolutely great. Tom Hiddleston kills the role. Sylvie was amazing. Kang in that final episode, so like mysterious, man. So good. All that Marvel and Disney have to do for Loki season two is just keep the same level of goodness, and you've got another certified banger. Everyone on the globe can agree, like just factually. Loki season one absolutely slapped and I'm just so down for number two. Coming number three, what if season two. I've been very vocal ladies and gentlemen, what if it's probably still my favourite MCU show on Disney Plus, I'm just being honest. I love multiverse stuff with like different characters doing different things. I thought season one was amazing, there was only one bad episode. That Thor one was pretty bad, but the Doctor Strange episode, the zombie episode and the final two, they're like ten. 10 out of 10, seen them so many times, like just those episodes. And I gotta be honest, I love anime, animated stuff and Marvel, I'm a fanboy for the MCU. This was perfect for me. I'm hearing rumors, I'm not gonna spoil it here, do not worry, but I'm hearing rumors of certain episodes for What If Season 2 and I am so very, very happy. Coming in second place, Mando Season 3. The most like consistent character on Disney Plus if we take Ahsoka out of the equation because obviously she came from Clone Wars. He's been running the show and you know he's good when he's the best thing in the Boba Fett show. Right? That, that's another fact. His episode and then the last episode a little bit as well. He was the best mate. That's pretty much Mando 2.5. Now we get in the full Season 3. I want to see more Darksaber. I want to see more Grogu. I want to see more Mandalore. Give me everything. I I need it now. And coming in first place, Invincible Season 2. It's actually one of my favourite TV show of 2020. Invincible just blew my mind. From a comic that I've never read, I didn't know anything about it. World of Superheroes, Omni-Man, the voice acting is amazing, the visuals are so good. It's obviously on Amazon Prime and genuinely like one of the best shows I've ever seen. So many people have not seen it, they're sleeping on it for I don't know what reasons, maybe because it's animated. But don't get it twisted, it is so violent. It's just amazing, mate. It's amazing and I'd be lying like if I didn't put this at number one. I could easily say, you know, Mando because it's Star Wars and stuff, that's number one. It'd be an easy way in. But I gotta be like true to myself, Invincible Season 1 was built different mate and I, I can't deny that was 10 out of 10 god tier for a season one i was obsessed i've seen it so many times now like it's just too good mate it has to be number one ladies and gentlemen do you agree or disagree most importantly tell me your list down below did i miss something out normally i miss something out that's huge i probably done it again man someone let me know down below thanks for watching guys i appreciate you all peace